Videos like these are made possible by viewers like you, who support the channel through Patreon, channel memberships, and stream donations. And don't forget to check out the Bad Weapon Rehabilitation servers at www.badweaponrehab.tf. Check the links in the description for more information, and let's get into the video. Welcome to Bad Weapon Academy, where we take a look at the worst weapons TF2 has to offer, and I show you how to best utilize them. After a, uh, short break, we're back to TF2 to take a look at one of Scout's most underused melee weapons, the Fan of War. It's no secret that Scout's using their melee weapons to kill people is basically relegated to meme status with the Holy Mackerel exclusively, but the Fan of War takes this a step further by making this one of the most useless weapons in the game to get kills with. But obviously that's not the whole story with this weapon, so let's find out what makes the Fan of War tick. The first thing you'll notice about the Fan of War is its damage penalty a whopping 75% less damage than the stock bat. Now the stock bat's base damage is already the lowest of all the game's stock melee weapons, so this brings it down from 35 damage to 9 damage. That's still pretty bad. Even its critical hits will deal less damage than stock bat swings, and you'll be able to get a lot of these as the weapon also crits when it would normally mini crit. To me, this is basically just a meme stat. There's absolutely no reason for you to continue swinging at an enemy while you have the fan of war out, unless you're just trying to style on them. One swing is all you'll ever need, since a successful hit against an enemy will inflict the mark for death status effect against them for a full 15 seconds. This last stat is both the main draw of the weapon, and also very interesting in how it functions, so let's dissect it for a bit. 15 seconds is pretty damn long in TF2 terms. That's twice as long as the afterburn duration of the flare guns, and 5 seconds longer than Jurati. But unlike both of these examples, there's no easy way to get rid of it. Fire is pretty easy to get rid of, and Jurati can be washed off with water, removed with a demonite charge, have its duration halved through healing from a dispenser or medic, or be removed entirely from the resupply locker. But for the fan of war, all you can do is wait out the duration. It's a completely persistent debuff, and one that lasts longer than any other debuff in the game. Now as a downside, you can only mark one enemy for death at a time, which given how strong this debuff could be when applied to a group, I think is fair. However, this does create an issue in regards to the weapon's playstyle. The main contention against this weapon is, why on earth would you bother taking the time to mark someone for death in melee range, when at melee range you could simply blow 100 damage with your torso with a meat shot, and then do that again 5 more times in rapid succession? At melee range, the vast majority of classes in the game are 2 shots anyway, so if you've closed that gap already, why would you turn a kill you could get in 2 attacks into one you'll now get in 3? Now there are some situations where it's honestly better to get a mark for death than a shot off on the enemy. One of these situations is when you're about to die no matter what anyway, because then you may as well get a last hit off on the enemy that makes it easier for your team to deal with them in those next 15 seconds, assuming they're actually around in that time frame. One of the really annoying things about the Fan of War is that it's best used in ambushes. If the enemy sees you as you're running towards them, the Fan of War is totally worthless. Just shoot them with your gun. But ambushes are best done when you're on the flank route, out of sight of the enemy, and away from your teammates. So if it comes down to a Hail Mary last swing on a flank route, your teammates may not be able to follow up on it depending on how far away they are from the fight. If you do the thing where you beef all of your scattergun shots and the guy still isn't dead like a true scout main, then taking a swing while you're in his face might be the only time this will actually work to your benefit. It is a good thing that of all the classes, scout is the one to get a melee with this effect, since his speed means he'll be able to catch up to his enemies very quickly. But at the end of the day, this is still a melee weapon in TF2, and you'll be getting into a frustrating number of situations where you hear the successful hit sound, only to be rewarded with absolutely nothing. Another issue with this is, at the range where you're able to get a mark for death, that there just aren't that many targets where getting mini crits on them will be all that helpful. One of the only exceptions is something like an overhealed heavy, and at the point where you're in melee range of one of those, you've got other concerns than getting mini crits on him. Of course, the biggest exception to all of this is in MVM, which is the main context that you'll see this weapon used in since it's pretty much the meta pick for scouts. Robots aren't gonna back up and shoot if they see you running towards them with the Fan of War. You have more than enough health on top of resistances to tank whatever they have to throw at you. You're even faster than normal with upgraded movement speed, which helps you juke out even more. 
and giants have so much health that even your fully upgraded primary weapons will have a hard time taking them down quickly. However, I'm of the opinion that even in MVM, the Fan of War falls off in terms of usefulness as the mission goes by. For one thing, it's an effect that's entirely replaceable. The Soldier's Buff Banner and the Sniper's Jurati will do the same thing not just on a marked giant, but also for all the other robots around them, and on-demand crit canteens or a medic's crit's uber will apply an even better version of the same effect. And as the mission goes on, your teammates and all of these effects will only be made more powerful with their upgrades. On a competent team, you may honestly be better off putting milk on the giant and then starting to shoot them without even bothering to mark it for death since you'd only be saving a second or two at best. Now when the round starts out, and on less competent teams, it's incredibly useful since your teammates aren't going to be that likely to have the damage outputs to deal with giants quickly without some kind of boost. But that doesn't take too long to change. However, for scouts who end up putting a lot more focus into dealing damage, it's still pretty useful for draining the health of a giant you've chosen to focus on, especially on waves that spawn multiple giants at the same time. On robots that aren't giants, yeah, just don't bother marking them. Even if you haven't put a single point into your scattergun, just shooting them is more beneficial. Ordinarily, I save MVM for last, but in this instance, MVM is likely the only situation you'll actually see this weapon being used, and I wanted to get it out of the way quickly before we got into the real use cases for this weapon. So what are those use cases? Well, they're unfortunately few and far between, but the times I was most able to make use out of the Fan of War were with three primary weapons in particular. The Shortstop, the Soda Popper, and the Force of Nature. The main thing these have in common is that they reload their entire clip at once in exchange for not having the same sustain power as the Scattergun, which I find synergizes quite well with the Fan of War's mini crit effects. The Shortstop works especially well since the mini crits help to make up for its lower damage output in general, allowing you to cross lethal damage thresholds against certain classes much easier, and even allowing you to make use of its mid-range capabilities if you use it in drive-bys where you tag someone with the Fan of War, and then run away while chipping them down right as they begin to realize what's going on. The shortstop's low damage output helps deal with the concern that simply shooting someone at close range is going to be more beneficial, because in a lot of cases that just might not be true. With the Soda Popper and Force of Nature, the concern is in regards to sustainability and burst damage. These weapons only fire two shots before you need to reload, and this can make hitting someone with the Fan of War much more viable, as it essentially turns two hits into three hits, which matters a lot more than it does on the scattergun. The extra damage of the Force of Nature meat shots especially can be very practical, allowing you to one-tap medics, and it helps to deal with the issue of launching enemies out of your effective range with your initial shot by either one-shotting them outright, or else allowing you to still deal significant damage at longer ranges. And with the Soda Popper, the already insane burst damage you'll deal is simply heightened even further, and you can charge up your hype meter faster than normal. All in all, these options give you far more wiggle room in terms of your mistake allowance, something that the Scattergun doesn't need nearly as much of due to its larger clip size. You could also use it to charge up Babyface Boost a bit faster, but I'd still stick with the Rap Assassin on that one. Also for the Backscatter, hitting someone with the Fan of War will only make them aware of your presence and prevent you from getting back hits in the first place. So don't bother, it still sucks. And secondaries are another interesting point to talk about, because there's some that work better than others. Unless you have an allergy to hitting shots that aren't mini crits, I'd avoid using the Criticola. Or rather, I'd avoid using the Fan of War with the Criticola. One of these weapons makes the other one basically completely obsolete, and I don't think I need to give you that many guesses to find out which one it is. I guess you could use them together if you want to only get critical hits with the Fan of War. There's a subclass for you to rival even the Penis Scout. On the subject of sodas, Bonk will help you get into a solid ambush position consistently without anyone giving you a hard time, since people are so prone to flat out ignoring Bonk Scouts in the first place. This makes it decently useful for getting rid of at least one of the Fan of War's problems, which is that just getting into position to actually bother using the thing can be a pain in the ass. It can also be useful for getting out of position, since the Fan of War encourages you to get into, let's say, somewhat suicidal positions in order to get your hit off, so the Bonk can get you to safety to live another day if you're so inclined. Mad Milk is always a good choice because it's understatedly insane, but outside of MVM, I wouldn't say it synergizes particularly well with the Fan of War. It's best if you're playing an outright support scout, using the Fan of War to help your teammates get kills rather than yourself, and using Milk to keep them alive. So yeah, basically like MVM without all the extra health, damage resistances, damage upgrades, groups of brainless enemies to shoot at and farm health off of, you know. Same same but different. The pistols in general are always good, 
and the effects of the Fan of War just make them even better. Using the Fan of War with damaging secondaries is the area where I'd say the Fan of War has a legitimate leg up on the Criticola. I would say that the Mark for Death debuff with the Criticola also mattered, but using the Fan of War in general is putting yourself into needlessly suicidal positions for the same benefit anyway, so same difference really. Anyway, the pistols can do some serious work. With the damage buff of the Winger allowing you to deal enough damage to kill Pyros and Demos in a single clip at close range. And the firing speed of the Pocket Pistol becomes even more deadly with extra damage backing it up because the Pocket Pistol needed that, I guess. And in general, they're all extremely useful dealing mini crit damage at just about any range. So all of these are good, but there's one more option that's my absolute favorite to use. The Flying Guillotine. It's almost certainly not the most effective secondary to pair with the Fan of War, but I absolutely find it to be the most fun. Mini crits will bump up the damage of the Cleaver to 68, and the Mark for Death effect will bump up the damage of the Bleed from 4 per tick to 5 per tick. Is this a big difference? Not really, but it does put a single Cleaver over the edge to one-shot light classes with the Bleed, which is incredibly satisfying. And a single shot from your scattergun of choice will do the rest of the job for most other classes. It brings back memories of the old Sandman-Cleaver combo without being completely asked to play against and having some degree of counterplay. So that's just about the Fan of War wrapped up. Ordinarily with classes like Heavy, Pyro, or Scout who have melee weapons that aren't all that useful, I'll still make the concession that they're better than their stock counterparts for providing at least some benefit. Is that the case with the Fan of War? Eh, that honestly depends. On servers with random crits enabled, I would say flat out no. For starters, the existence of random crits makes getting mini crits a lot less valuable, and also, for as much of a meme as it is to run at people with your fish, those 105 damage random crits really do add up. And in situations where you beef all your scattergun shots and are maybe using a non-pistol secondary, yeah, slapping someone to death is a decently viable Hail Mary that actually secures the kill instead of hoping that someone else will do the same in the next 15 seconds. Or hoping that the hit even connects at all. Now on servers without random crits, then I'd say it offers more of a benefit. Even the damage penalty doesn't matter as much after the first swing in that case, Unless, of course, you happen to get a crits charge or something to that effect, but that's so niche that I don't think it means much. The Fan of War is a weapon I like a lot in concept. This combo starting tool that'll help you rack up damage quickly, but in practice, it's clunky, hard to get general use out of, and just isn't worth it most of the time. One thing I'd potentially like to see is an increased attack range similar to the disciplinary action, just to make getting the initial hit more consistent and less frustrating. But over on our rebalance server, We've not only given it a faster holstering speed that lets you switch to your main means of attacking a lot faster, making the process a lot more snappy and less clunky, but you also get a speed boost after you get a kill on an enemy you've marked for death, letting it act as a sort of big earner for scout, letting you escape more easily, or get that next mark more aggressively. Fitting for a weapon that encourages you to play like a spy. Both of these benefits increase the effectiveness of the weapon while still keeping its core design intact, but it's always important to let us know what you think. We have weekly feedback sessions for specific weapons so people can tell us exactly what they think, and what needs to be changed. So if you give this version of the Fan of War a try and think it's too underwhelming, or maybe even too powerful, you can let us know when the time comes to give your feedback. Just make sure you actually try it out first instead of reading the stats and coming to your own conclusions. For now though, go out there and get those sick mini crit cleaver combos and tell them Fish sent you.